I'm gonna go ahead and look at Casanova's lineups so I can do his ban. Casanova's bringing Ionia Noxus, Shadow Isles Demacia, and Bilgewater Freljord. These are some hot takes from my boy Cass over here. So let's go ahead and look at his hot takes. This is a raging hot take. Oh my god, what is this? Oh! Oh! What on earth? Whoa! I mean, man, respect, dude. Good work. Could, could not. That's like, kind of interesting. Huh. Okay. I mean, I might actually end up banning that one. We'll see. So we are against Callista Quinn. That's quite interesting. Um, the three trump one version, I think we can actually kick this. And just try to hit something a little bit good for the like uh you know the early options that we're gonna want. Round one. Fight. We have an interesting hand here. I mean his deck is like kinda super straightforward. It's kinda like just like the very generic kinda like scouts concepts. So it's three Quinn, three Bannerman, three Genevieve, three Concerted Strike, three Rangers Resolve. The weirdest thing about the list is the three Rangers Resolve, but it'll do pretty well in this matchup. It's like the more Rangers Resolves they have in this matchup, the better off they are, really. I mean, I'm always gonna Mystic Shot this. I really do kind of have to. It's kind of insane not to, right? We could take damage and generate the Mystic Shot with Ezreal. I mean, it's just coming down to like keeping their board clean, right? So like every Mystic Shot ends up counting. I think Rattling Bones would tell me to tank this. I think Rattling Bones would tell me to play Ezreal on 3 and just get the free shot. I think it's pretty greedy to not hit the tracker here. It seems kind of like, sort of insanely greedy. I also could summon a Claws right now, but I actually don't think I should need to yet. Mostly the biggest thing is just making sure you keep their board narrow, right? You just want their Bannermen and Genevieve's to feel quite bad. Okay, that's a good card for him to have there. It's like, now if he gets a Bannerman, he's got a pretty sweet Bannerman board. We hit a fairly nut nutty draw here. We got the, the, the gotcha. Uh, and he's tapped under, which puts us in like a pretty advantaged position. It's like, that's sort of funny. You can just like, Mystic Shot this too, potentially. I mean, you really just like, it's just about keeping this board as narrow as it can get, really. Pretty straightforward stuff. Like, as long as he doesn't have a wide board, he kind of can't win. And a good player would always draw the gotcha there, too. Now, the very fascinating thing is, he actually can't reasonably deal one damage very easily at all here. So I think I can pretty safely block the Scythria with the Ezreal. So he's not even attacking with the Scythria. That's actually really smart of him. I think I can play this uh, actually a little bit greedy. I just need to make sure I'm like trading down the board basically. He really can't take any like weird single combats or stuff here. A scary thing he could do is Bannerman, but I think Bannerman's basically outside of his range. He really would have played it last turn if he had it. Which is good for us because it sort of tells us he has a pretty bad hand. Ranger's Resolve is something that's definitely in his range. I don't think the fact that he played a Ranger last turn takes him out of the range for Ranger's Resolve. Especially since it's a 3 of. It's just so easy for him to have drawn it here. So if he has like a single combat, it would make sense to play it like this. Okay, so we forced the Resolve out. That's really nice. Because that's like such a low value resolve using it like that. Especially because it plays into our static shock next turn anyway. 
So I'm like kind of super happy to just play our Chungus, Wungus, and chill here. We don't really like... I'm not too worried about a singular combat here. It's a one of, so it's low odds. Okay. So he's got the scare card here, the Genevieve. We've got like Will into Mystic Shot, which is going to be kind of what we're going to need here. That does mean we can't like rummage the clouds away. We're probably basically entirely forced to will this Genevieve though. I don't think there's really a way around that. Yeah, I don't think we can rummage yet, actually. That's a little sad. So our Ezreal's, you know, got pretty good level progress here, all things considered. And you can't really have resolve at this point. Whoa! That can't be right. Where's the second attack? That was kind of weird. Ooh, hello! I don't know, Gotcha's a sort of hilarious draw in spots like this. It's just kind of like everything you could ever want from a card is what Gotcha is. Like our Ezreal is actually flipping here, which is really degenerate. That's a nut draw. Hyper nut. Aesthetic truck might have been sort of like kind of a misplay. I don't know. So all we need to do is survive one more attack here, basically, and we're good. Yeah, I mean, we could gotcha the Callista. The thing is, he's about to play Genevieve, so his units are about to, like, get out of those ranges. Which makes, like, this kind of the only time to get value out of this, I think. I guess we can start off with the rummage and kind of see what we hit. It could potentially inform a decision, I guess. And those are pretty good safety draws. It just kind of makes us safe against anything. I mean, the gotcha is just so safe to take right now. I think it's I think it's just the safe thing to do, really. It's like, he kind of has one more turn left to kill us. Double palm just kind of like ends it here, really. I feel pretty cozy. Like, this is a very favored matchup. Well, I shouldn't say very favored, but it does feel pretty nice. It's like, it's just cozy. It's a cozy matchup. So I don't think he can win anymore. At this point, the only thing that matters is keeping an eye for Pursuit. And Pursuit's like omega easy for him to have here. It's like, Pursuit is like his entire range, basically. So it's like, we keep an eye for Pursuit and he just kind of dies. Like, so here's the Pursuit. Oh, he actually doesn't have it. Well, that makes our job even easier then. Whee! I mean, he can't really stay alive here. That should be, like, kind of insanely difficult for him to do. I'm looking at this hand and I'm thinking, man, is there any, like, risky way to throw this? There really shouldn't be. It's like, my draws would have to be absolutely dead for me to even have a chance of losing this. In theory, the safe thing to do is to take passes. I mean, this will force him to develop into me. Which makes it, I guess, slightly safer. I'm not really sure what I'm worried about happening here. Okay, so that's game one. Fairly clean. Um, playing the the Ezreal matchup versus this deck is actually a little bit tricky. You have to have like a bit of a a bit of a different mentality because they're just kind of like board board centric beef is kind of the single biggest thing. So the reason this deck is entitled Mav is a genius. And so my prep group is like uh, basically a bunch of people. Mav is one of them, and basically the the entire idea of this concept is like. 
The only way they can let through Karma Ezreal is if they're playing like aggro lineups. So this is like hard text for the aggro matchup. Like literally zero Shadow Assassin. Don't try this at home, kids. So he's banned our Braum, so now we're on the Funk. Now the reason this is called the Funk is because this was my bright idea. It was probably a trash idea that's going to lose me the tournament, but you know, we'll see. We should be favored in this matchup as well. Round two, fight. It's like we just need to not draw too heavy like we did last time. I'm actually pretty happy with this kind of opening hands. It's like usually this hand is just going to get places. And Fading Memories will hit Jaw Hunters pretty early on. So the reason I like Fading Memories in Deep, and this is from like day one of the Bilgewater expansion I think has been correct. Um, you can use it as a jettison if you need to use it on like a Jeg Dredgers or something. Like you have that flexibility. But sometimes you can just use it as like an early unit. It has really good synergy with Jaw Hunters just because it's a challenger so the ephemeral doesn't matter. And this is a card you just kind of want to run more of in this archetype as well. So it feels pretty cozy here. We're going to go ahead and snap pass. Fast pass is important because, you know, I mean, makes his, makes his play into hard gun a bit awkward. So he's done like a casual double pass here, which gives us a... A pretty big advantage. It's kind of like hard for him to do a ton here. I'm just gonna go ahead and snipe this one off. I mean, can he punish this? It's like if I let him protect her afterwards, it, my Vile Feast does actually get kind of awkward. Especially on that double float, you can easily read a Brick's Protector from that. So we really want to make sure we get in the value while we can. And there's a couple things we can do here, but I think the proactive Petty Officer is just a really easy play. Usually we'll get like a 2-1 or something here. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, he oh hello. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Oh, look at that. Okay, and now our Bork Beast even has the ability to attack. So we have a couple sick plays here. We can use Hired Goon and start like really jamming this guy up. But we're banking an awkward amount of mana. We could also like threaten uh, a pretty cute Maokai. And Maokai is kind of like how you want to be playing these early positions. Um, we're pretty safe against like kind of all of his plays actually no matter what. But not using Maokai here is actually such a big vulnerability. It's kind of insane. I really should just make sure we're trying to like get our Maokai value here. So I think it's pretty fine just taking this solo attack. We could also take like the reactive pass. I mean, the chip could matter, and I don't think the reactive pass is going to do a ton. If he plays like Callista, I could go into Jaw. Yeah, Callista's possible here. That's going to matter more than the chip. Let's see what he does first. I mean, he really can't burn too negative in this matchup where he is the Omega aggressor. So he's representing a really narrow range of hand with these opening passes, right? His deck is all about being proactive. Wow, so we also know he has a Callista on top of his deck now, too. That's, yeah, that's pretty bad for him, honestly. Jesus. I think I'll just Jaw Hunters, honestly. This is kind of crazy. It's so hard to not Maokai here, man. It's so hard to not Maokai here. But I, I really keep his board, like, uncomfortably narrow. And I can also, like, allow my Bark Beast to even get an attack in. Because, like, Resolve is not really good here at all. So, he's just got like single combat and relentless pursuit. Cards that really suck here. So the Maokai, just like, when in doubt, you really want to play this as early as possible so it can start giving you like that board value you need. So this is quite interesting. Hmm, okay. Sweet. So we're trading down the board. Against uh, any Demacia deck, you really just want to keep the board as narrow as possible. Even applying a little bit of early pressure, which by the way, considering his hand rage, could actually be important. Now he's the aggressor here, but what we really need to understand is like, he could easily be on like, some sort of like, double Genevieve style hands. And those can be actually kind of scary, right? We really want to make sure that we have the ability to beat a lot of hands like that. Okay, so we'll probably just play Maokai after the combat is what I'm thinking. Uh, definitely want to Jaw Hunter's next turn to threaten the Quinn. We know he drew a Callista because we know his Bannerman whiffed, so this card right here, this left one in his hand, is a Callista. He has such a hard time trying to burn our mana here. That's such a troll play. You really can't do that. Okay. And I've got a pretty easy Maokai here, I think. The one potential downside is like, if we want to go into Jaw Hunter's next turn, 
then we're a little worried about both Ranger's Resolve and his second Bannerman, especially because his range is really tight, right? Those are cards that are in his range. So his range just means like we've eliminated a lot of cards he could have. He has exactly one Callista in his hand. He has a really hard time having second Callista. He doesn't have Warchefs, he doesn't have Fleet Feather, he doesn't have Scythria, he doesn't have Grizzled Ranger, right? That means the rest of his cards are actually more likely. So I'm very happy to take this block. The real reason isn't to save the three health. The real reason is to deal one damage to the Quinn. So now my Jaw Hunters can kill it through both Resolve and Bannerman, which are sort of the two scare cards that are well in his range. I think his... What's happening on his side of the board isn't enough to get me off of this. Also, even like Genevieve could maybe keep this alive if I don't get the free spider kill there. So this feels pretty solid. I mean, he's the aggressor and it looks like he's just kind of getting a little BTFO'd. Um, in, in general, I mean, Devourer is a card that's just kind of like can hit a lot of things in this matchup. When in doubt, save it for the Grizzled Ranger um, because... It's a card that you can deny a lot of value because they don't get the death trigger effect. Now, some of you guys have pointed out that you feel like me saving it for the ranger um, in that other game was a misplay, and it actually, it easily might have been. It's kind of hard to say. I think I'll just play another Jaw Hunters here. I feel pretty comfortable doing this. I don't really see, like, big punishes to this. We don't really need to keep this, like, mana threat alive. So just getting a couple more Jaw Hunters on this board. Make sure we're winning the current game in the future. It's like, we're at 20 health, we have a scary board. He has a hard time really answering a lot of this stuff. And we're actually threatening some actual pressure here, which is sort of hilarious as well. So we always have to think, like, what are his potential responses here? Not too much. I mean, he's on a super brick hand, right? He's really, he's representing that he doesn't have too much of anything. Now that, I wasn't hand tracking. I'm, I, did he play that from the left side? That, and that might be a second Callista. I should have been watching the exact card in hand. It only matters if he misplays anyway. I, I normally hand track that kind of stuff. I'm normally like super, super paranoid about that sort of thing. But yeah, anyway, this game is over. It's like it's hyper, super duper mega over. It's like, He's the aggressor here, he's on a 5 card hand, he's at 10 health, we have like an 8 card hand, Ruination Vengeance, there's just nothing you can do here. So yeah, Scouts is a really kind of like vulnerable deck for this format, in my opinion. Okay, so his hand rage could easily have stuff like Consorted Strike, which does actually make something like Devour of the Depths a little bit awkward here. Mostly we just want to play like pretty proactively is going to be the single biggest thing. Just make sure we can slam some beef. I really like the beast below. It's just like a nice beef play. I don't really mind like trading down the board. Like if this trades for Callista, I'm pretty happy. He needs to start like trying to threaten the Maokai here, which is going to be a little bit tricky for him to do. Okay, I mean I can just play this too. I really don't need to keep like mana or options alive right now. We're just getting like closer and closer to deep. But yeah, I kind of wouldn't call this a sea monsters or a deep deck. I know that it kind of looks weird running this concept without like Nautilus or Jettison, but I, I think this is more of just like Shadow Isles Bilgewater Control. We happen to be running Devourer and Jaw Hunters and Maokai because these are pretty good cards. But I think Nautilus is actually kind of a poop card. I mean, that's the hottest take of this tournament. So, I mean, we'll see. So, again, we have to keep in mind that Ranger's Resolve is really in his range right now. If he doesn't attack with Callista, wow! Whoa, that's crazy! That's a misplay. That's a straight-up misplay, I think. Like, so he's telling us he doesn't have Resolve in his hand, and he's in a bluffable position. He, he has, like, sort of no choice in this situation except to, like, bluff that Callista is in his hands, in my opinion. I think there's kind of nothing else he can really gain value out of doing here, honestly. It's like, you're forced into that bluff, I think. And his Callista is, of course, never leveling here. Oh, it might level for a little bit, potentially. Whoa. So he's got Pursuit. Pursuit's the only card he's thinking about using here. Maybe a weird single combat, but we eliminated single combat from his range like two turns ago. So this is 100% a Pursuit. We can put a second card in his hand to a Genevieve, and he might easily be on like a double pursuit. Could make sense. So yeah, I mean, he'll get a bit of damage because he'll drag the 4-1. So, I mean, his Callista will be able to attack here. 
You must attack with a Callista here, my friend. You must do it. Please attack with the Callista. Casanova, what are you doing? My friend, what is this? I mean, he's probably lost anyway. Like, it's really hard for him to win in positions like this. I kind of have just like a bunch of big boys I'm about to really start like shoving up his ass. That's a little too vulnerable. I mean, I guess I'm okay just playing this out. Let's play the hired gun first. Kind of keeps my options a bit more flexible. I thought- I, I read the timer. I thought we had two minutes left. We actually have 27 minutes left. That's kind of funny. So yeah, there's not too much about this position that really makes very much of a difference at these points. Mostly we're just kind of like playing our, our beef. This is fine. So his hand range, I expect his hand to be a Genevieve in a second pursuit or something like that. Again, you can't like always do hand reads, but his hand range is like incredibly narrow right now. I'm letting his Callista level is kind of whatever. Sure. Sure, I'll just do this, not let his Callista level. Why the hell not? Doesn't matter what we do here. I mean, I could just ruination. I would probably like get him to concede. Conceding is faster than playing this out. Whatever. Okay. So his last card is probably Pursuit. I think he's about to play it and then concede. Okay. Have it your way, though. <sighs> Show the Pursuit? No? Okay. Brutality. Okay, so it was a pretty clean 2-0. Um, I don't think either game was, like, super close. The one against, like, the, the one where we were on the Ezreal deck was a little bit close.